Harvard President Claudine Gay resigning yesterday after testimony backlash and plagiarism accusations. Joining us now to talk about what role donors play in the latest campus controversies, Eric Desenhall is chairman of Desenhall Resources. Eric, thanks so much for joining us. Obviously, the plagiarism charges, which just kept multiplying and coming out, were untenable. The congressional testimony uh, was unacceptable to many. But I, I do think this really is speaking and perhaps sparking a larger debate about the role of donors, given um, all of the major donors that had led up to this, refusing to give more money to Harvard. This also started at UPenn, where their president resigning. I just want to start by reading a quote from Scott Bach. He's the former chair of Board of Trustees at UPenn, the CEO of Greenhill, very well-respected banker on Wall Street, saying, quote, universities need to be very careful of the influence of money, especially one like Penn, which has a business school with a brand larger than that of the university itself. Donors should not be able to decide campus policies or determine what is taught. Do you think that there's a risk here of donors feeling like they're emboldened to, to play more of a role, not just, obviously, this plagiarism accusation and one thing, but in, in what universities do and in academic freedom? Well, I think that there's a couple things at work here. First of all, uh, active alumni is not exactly <clears throat> a new issue. Yeah. Uh, I think that what we have that is new here is, to quote a certain movie, a particular set of skills. You have uh, alumni who are specializing in proxy fights yeah. uh, at, at, for, for a living. This is a very specific area of endeavor. Uh, having dealt with people of this cohort, they are among the sharpest people you would ever encounter. They know how to work with the news media. <clears throat> they know how uh, to mobilize third parties. And I think that this is what you see happening here. What's interesting is if you talk to some of the people interested in this area, they don't feel like they are masters of the universe pulling strings. The way they feel is that they have been asleep at the switch for 40 years, allowing a certain movement, the DEI movement, to, to get deeper into campus culture than they ever imagined. And a lot of the conversations they're having is, what have we been funding? For 40 years. Yeah. Even if we personally weren't funding it, we're now responsible for it. So I don't think what you're what you're hearing now is how do we further rule the world? I think it's why haven't we been doing something like this sooner? The other thing to keep in mind is one of the more important catalysts in the Harvard situation was a student, was a student uh, who I believe was anonymous, who came forward and said, how can you hold us to certain standards if there are several dozen plagiarism allegations against the president of the university. And so it really was a student that tipped the scales uh, in the 11th hour. Yeah, I mean, there's there's been this implied <clears throat> agreement for over 100 years where wealthy donors say, look, I'm going to give you the university money so that my less than academically stellar grandkids can get into your, your university. And by the way, I get a tax write off and I'll basically stay out of your hair. I mean, there have been a couple instances where they tried to interfere and they were they were told no and they got their money back. But to your point is perhaps are the donors the only ones who were brave enough, strong enough able to stand up to these universities and so therefore will they be an important corrective to you know I, I my eyes have been open to some of the um you know disparities on universities where 90 80 percent of faculty are democrats versus republican at harvard mm -hmm. i think only one percent identified as conservative um will they play an important role in what some see as correcting university life and culture right now they are. Look, uh, October 7th and the subsequent hearings with the university presidents were uh, you were waking up sleeping lions. Uh, I think that you have you have people who didn't really understand what they had been funding. And you as a chronicler of the wealthy understand that a lot of what you have here is wealthy donors who feel that they are being magnanimous. They want to show the kind of money they have. They want to give back to the universities, but they're not necessarily involved in the granular details. And what you've been hearing in recent weeks is, my God, we've been funding people who want to kill us. And that comes from people who are capitalists. 
It comes from the Jewish community, uh, where you have seen situations on campus where people have lost their jobs and gotten in trouble for very vague kind of um, uh, venial sins. But when asked about what is happening, whether supporting genocide is a violation of campus free speech, it's, well, let's wait and see. You're seeing the same thing with feminist groups who said all lives matter, but now some of them are saying yeah. all lives matter, but not so much the women who were mass raped on October 7th. And very quickly, you know, Bill Ackman tweeted yesterday, A2 Sally, referring to the president of MIT, do you think she's going to stay? Well, I, I don't know the internal dynamics, but certainly they're drawing a bead on people who are considered violators in this DEI area. And make no mistake, that is what this is really about. It is not just about free speech.